Good morning. I am Father Ryan, the priest here at Christ Episcopal Church, and whether you're joining us here in person or online, I'm delighted to be with you today as we worship God in the beauty of holiness, as we dream in God's word together, as we are nourished at this table where all are welcome to receive communion. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Any announcements? Barb, please. Um, I would like to invite everybody to coffee hour today. We are going to have it in the narthex. We're going to try that again. So please come and join us. We're going to have coffee hour today. And thank you so much to all of the saints that help out with coffee hour, our hospitality team. And we would like to have people sign up in October when we can just meet up. So yes, if you're ever interested in bringing anything to coffee hour, it would be so very appreciated. Even if you go to Walmart and get some donuts or um, bring some candy, anything, anything that you have to offer um, is so very much appreciated. And if not, we're always glad to see you anyway. Kent, please. Oh, I've got a couple of saints this morning, please, okay. <laughs> one more space in my car i drive a tiny little ford fiesta but i've got one more space if anyone wants to join uh, carl and barb and i and i know kent will be there as well if he's sad and let me know let me know um we're going to do the color run what day is that uh, for fifth And yes is when um, it's a run, whether you do a mile or a 5K, um, and they throw paint at you. And it's like, like yeah, it's really fun. It's, it, it's really fun. What's that? Yeah, like this powder color. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday. Is that with the bus that works Later, yes. Um, so then after the color run, I will be uh, partnering with Mississippi Mutts to host a pet blessing, a blessing of the animals. I'm so grateful to Mississippi Mutts for inviting me into their beautiful store. Uh, we'll have pet blessings for everyone in the community that wants to come. There'll be refreshments. It'll be a wonderful event uh, around the feast day of St. Francis. Um, to my understanding, the congregation has had pet blessings in the past, but how wonderful is it that we're able to offer that to, uh, to Cape as a whole, for everyone to come and hear more about our church and the great things that we're doing and to share blessings of those furry friends or friends with scales, all of God's creation. Okay, all of this will be in the e-newsletter if you forget, no worries. And now, my friends, let us worship God in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of the Lord.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you... O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will be reading Psalm 54 responsively, breaking at the asterisks. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts. Do not be boastful and false to the truth. 
Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite any of the younger saints among us, any kids to come forward, and if their parents would like to come too, they're most welcome. Hi, friends. Hi. Oh, you're ready for a blessing. Not yet. Well, good thinking, though. All right, why don't you join me down here, crisscross applesauce, okay? All right. Hi, friends. Hi. It's me, Father Ryan, again. I'm so happy to see you all today at church. Now, I want to make sure that everyone gets across. I know Emma got one last week, and I have enough just for everybody, okay? I'll give you one. Cora, it's good to see you again. All right. All right, here's another one, okay? All right, now, if you ever meet a saint, you might want it. You can share it, too, okay? All right. Yes, a ball, and specifically a soccer ball. Yes. Now, I want to tell you about something really special that happened to me this week. I got to go to Jude's soccer game. Yeah, it's your ball. Yeah, it's your ball. Here, I, I just wanted to show some friends. You did such a good job. I'm proud of you, and I'm proud of all of you. Um, and so I went to Jude's game, and you know what was special about it? Yeah, what, so when someone got hurt on the field or had an accident, everybody took a knee at the same time because they care about everybody. Do you remember that, June? Yeah. What was that like? Sometimes I get a little upset. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, it really meant a lot to me. One second, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I love that everybody took a knee because everybody wants to care for one another. And in today's story, Jesus says that we should all serve one another. And one of the ways that we can serve one another is by showing kindness to each other. Yeah. How else can we be servants? Helping each other up. Yes. I love that. What else, maybe? Maybe someone like build something or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. If they need help building something. Mm -hmm. Maybe Legos. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I had a Lego Lego birthday party. You did? I thought that was awesome. And maybe we were playing Nerf guns outside. That's so mean. Oh, okay. The Nerf guns, yeah. Um, And so maybe sometimes we help by playing with one another. And maybe on the playground, we see a friend who 
isn't playing with anybody and we can be their friends and play with them. Yeah. Jesus calls us to serve and there's lots of different ways we can do that. And so that's what I want you all to know today and I end with a prayer. Let us pray, friends. Jesus, you love us so much and you call us to serve. Give us kindness and grace to be friends to one another and to serve like you love us. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, thank you so much. I'll see you next week, okay? Okay. Oh, it's for you. That's for you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, 
Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So as I mentioned earlier, this past week, I had the absolute joy of watching one of our own, Jude, at his soccer game. Many of you know Jude, one of our younger saints here at Christ Episcopal Church. And let me tell you, that kid has energy. (laughs) The game was lively, back and forth action, A few bumps and bruises along the way, as you'd expect at a soccer game. But what caught my attention wasn't the score or even the plays. It was something deeper, something powerful. What moved me was what happened when a player got hurt. I want to share this because it speaks volumes. Every time a player went down, and it didn't matter whose team they were on, all the kids on the field stopped what they were doing, took a knee and waited. No hesitation, no wondering who had the ball or who was winning. They just stopped. They knelt, showing concern. Oh, thank you, June. And it got me thinking. What if that's what Jesus is calling us to in today's gospel? What if real discipleship is like those kids on the soccer field, ready to stop, ready to kneel with those who are hurting, right there in the midst of our busy lives? What if following Christ means we choose the hurting over the hustle? In today's Gospel from Mark, we hear how the disciples were caught up in an argument about who was the greatest. Can't you just picture it? The disciples were walking along, maybe thinking no one's paying attention, tossing around questions like, who's Jesus's favorite? Or who's the most important? And then, like the ultimate coach with endless patience, Jesus steps in and says, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. In this moment, Jesus is flipping the script, turning the world's idea of greatness upside down. He's saying, you've got this all wrong. In God's kingdom, greatness isn't about pushing our way to the top. It's about lowering oneself in service to others. And isn't it amazing how our children can teach us the ways of God? Like Jude and his soccer friends, ready to hit pause on their own pursuits, to take a knee with someone who's struggling. Jesus is telling us in today's gospel that real greatness doesn't come from being the first. It comes from being last and servant of all. My friends, we know the world's constant drumbeat. It tells us to keep striving, to keep climbing, to prove our worth by our success and status. We feel the weight of it every day, pushing us to achieve more, to be more, 
and often to the point of breaking. But here's the good news. Jesus didn't come to add to that pressure. He came to free us from it. Jesus, the kingdom of God, flips the whole game upside down. Christ calls us out of the rat race, out of the grind, and says, I came that you might have life, and have life abundantly. And that abundant life, my friends, is not found in being the best, the brightest, or the most successful. No, it's found in love. It's found in service. It's found when we stop, take a knee, and kneel beside those who are hurting. That's life abundant. That's where true greatness is, Christ taught us. The world may say, step over people to get ahead. But Jesus says, lift them up. The world says, climb higher. But Jesus says, come down low and serve. And when we follow Christ, we're no longer bound by the world's definition of greatness. We're free, free to love, free to serve, free to kneel. And my friends, when we kneel that, that is where we meet Jesus. Then just to drive the point home, Jesus does something unexpected. He brings a little child right into the middle of the group. Now, we've all seen those heartwarming images of Jesus with children, like the one on today's service leaflet. But to really understand what's going on in the gospel, we've got to flip open the history book for just a moment. You see, in the world Jesus lived in, Children weren't viewed the same way as we hope to view them today. Back in the ancient world, they had very little status and voice. In the ancient world, they were often overlooked, seen as not really important until they grew up and could contribute as adults. So when Jesus takes a child, places them front, and center and says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, he's making a bold statement. Jesus is saying, the one you think doesn't matter, the ones the world overlooks, that's where you'll find me. That's with whom you'll find me. Jesus flips the whole idea of status upside down. That true greatness is found in welcoming, caring for, and loving those who the world leaves behind. And as I watched Jude's soccer game again, when all the kids took a knee for the player who was down, I saw the gospel come to life. I saw it come to life. Who are the people in your life, in our world, who need us to take a knee with them, who's hurting, overlooked, struggling on the sidelines. Some of you know that not too long ago, John and I moved, and now we live right across from one of the elementary schools here in town. And often on my way to church or to a meeting, I drive by the playground where the kids are running and laughing and playing. And as I pass by, I often find myself thinking in places of prayer about the kind of example we, as the people of God, are setting for them. What do our lives show our children about what really matters? Love and service and kindness. At the heart of God's kingdom, Jesus shows us today that how we treat those who might be overlooked or struggling matters so deeply. Not just for us, but for those who are watching, especially our children, especially those who will come after us. 
when we stop to offer a word of kindness or help someone in need, we're showing our children and the world, and the world, what it means to live in the way of Christ. So my friends, as we go into our week, I want to invite us to be on the lookout for those moments where we can take a knee, where we can pause and notice someone who might be struggling, a neighbor going through a tough time, someone at work who's feeling overwhelmed, perhaps someone right here in our church family who needs an extra bit of love and care. And it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. Sometimes the smallest acts of kindness carry the most weight in God's kingdom. Because like Jude's soccer game, when we take a knee, when we put others first, that's where we'll find Jesus. That's where true greatness lies, not in winning, but in serving, not in being first, but in being last. Amen. Please stand as you are able on page six of our service leaflet. Let us profess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Dion, our bishop, Ryan, our priest, and for all people in their vocation and ministry. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our neighbors, both near and far. Help us to see Christ in every person we meet and to extend God's loving care to all. May we work together to create a world where everyone is valued and none are forgotten. 
God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the blessings of this life and those on our hearts, especially Hispanic Heritage Month. For what else are we thankful? God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Kathy and Deanna Mayer, Pat Williams, Elizabeth Dick's wife, Dan Featherston, Aaron Opa, Donnie Wilson, Pris, Daryl Finch, Joan Thomas, Heather and Julie, Randy's dad, Robert Hadley, Lynn Thomas, Paul, the Ray family, Paul Hammock, Linda Vanderpool, Gloria Atherley, Shelley Sprinkles, Ricky Livingston, Jessica Van Dusen, Kelly, Tim Gaynor, the Miller family, Sam Gerald, the Clark family, Aspen and Gina, Everett Grace, Leela and Lisa at the Mayo Clinic, Father Bob Towner, Wendy Lincoln, Lee Humphrey. For whom else do we pray? God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Kay Sykes, Billy Miller, Gordon Jones, Sherry, Dennis Brome, Rosemary Weaver, Murray Dunn. For whom else do we pray? God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace.
As a reminder, all of my friends, you are welcome to receive communion at this table. All are welcome to receive communion here at Christ Episcopal Church. This is not our table, nor is it the Episcopal Church's table. It is God's table, and at God's table, all are welcome. If you would just like to receive the bread, you have received communion fully. And if you'd like to receive the wine as well, you may intinct or dip it in the chalice or receive directly from the chalice. And if you'd like to come forward for a blessing instead of communion, you're most welcome to. I'd love to offer you God's blessing. Just cross your arms this way. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our savior Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome.
standing or kneeling as you are able on page 10 of our service leaflet to post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you, God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.